Hi, everyone. My name is Marin, and I am a software engineer on Google Maps. Thanks for joining us for our Kickstart problem walkthrough. Not familiar with Kickstart? Head to our website after the video to learn more about our online coding competition. I'm here today with my colleague, Kareem. Thanks, Marin. Hi there. My name is Kareem, and I'm a software engineer on Google Photos. Incidentally, Maps and Photos are my favorite Google products, and I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about Kickstart. Great to have you here, Kareem. Today, we're going to walk through our platform and how to solve an algorithmic problem during a Kickstart round. Whether you've tuned in today to prep for an upcoming Kickstart round, learn more about competitive programming, get ready for an interview, or simply have fun, there is something here for everyone. Let's get started. How do you sign up for Kickstart? The first step is to create a coding competitions profile with a Gmail account. Once you've created your profile, you aren't done yet. Make sure you then register for Kickstart. You will need to do this in order to participate in any online or on-site round. Pause the video here if you need to create your profile and register at g.co slash kickstart and hit play once you're ready to go. Now that you're registered and logged in, you're all set to participate in any upcoming Kickstart challenge. But what does competing in a round actually entail? To participate, you'll click on the Compete Now button on the homepage to take you to the problem set. This is the problem overview page where you can access the problems in the round, take a look at your rank on the scoreboard, ask clarifying questions to Google moderators, check the time remaining, and refer to round statistics. In a normal Kickstart round, you will usually see four problems that you can attempt to solve. Each problem varies in difficulty level. These colored bars under each problem name provides you with statistics about how many users have attempted the problem and how many have been successful. In order to read each problem statement and submit solutions, you'll need to click on the Open Problem button. This blank space above the scoreboard is where you'll be able to view your points and penalties, which means a wrong attempt, from your submission. It's blank right now, since we haven't submitted anything yet. Below that is the scoreboard that will be up during and post round. Here you'll be able to find where you ranked compared to other participants. Throughout this video, we will refer to our FAQ, which is our frequently asked question page linked in the top menu bar. The FAQ is filled with information about how to prepare and compete in Kickstart. During a round, we encourage you to have the FAQ open in a separate tab to quickly refer back and forth if you have a question. Now that we understand key dashboard features, let's see how to attempt a problem on the platform. We are going to solve Yogurt, a past Kickstart problem from 2018. To the left is the problem statement which explains the task you are asked to solve. It is very important you read the entire problem statement carefully. Let's look at the problem statement for Yogurt. Yogurt can be a nutritious part of an appetizer, main course, or dessert but it must be consumed before it expires, and it might expire quickly. Moreover, different cups of yogurt might expire on different days. Lucy loves yogurt, and she has bought n cups of yogurt, but she is worried that she might not be able to consume all of them before they expire. The i-th cup of yogurt will expire a of i days from today, and a cup of yogurt cannot be consumed on the day it expires or any day after that. As much as Lucy loves yogurt, she can still only consume at most k cups of yogurt each day. What is the largest number of cups of yogurt that she can consume starting from today? Then there's the input and output section, which explains the format of how your solution should read and write. Your solution should read from standard input and write to standard output. For yogurt, the first line of the input gives the number of test cases t. t test cases follow. Each test case starts with one line containing two integers n and k as described previously. Then there's one more line with n integers a of i. Further, there's the limits section, which specifies the general constraints of the input variables and any other special constraints. Usually, limits for test set 1 are set in such a way that an inefficient or easier solution can pass the test set, 
whereas test set 2 might need more efficient algorithms or data structures. In either case, the test sets we use to validate your code are much larger and may contain corner cases that you don't see in the samples. On the right hand side, we have the built-in editor where you can write your code in a variety of languages and also test it on our servers by toggling the show test input button on the bottom right. An easy way to get a test case is to copy one of the example inputs and paste them in. Or you can write your own test samples for edge cases. You can write code and run tests until you feel confident that you have the right solution. You will likely make some mistakes, but that is what the editor is for. Just keep at it. In Kickstart, we run the test cases right away, so you get to see the results immediately on the problem screen. If you get it wrong, don't worry, you can edit your code and try again up until the round ends. We support a variety of languages like Python, Java, C++, etc. But I recommend mastering one language as it will help you code faster and avoid obvious bugs. Check out our FAQ page for all supported languages and libraries and code snippets for all Kickstart problems. When you are ready, hit Submit Attempt. Let's get back to yogurt. Marin, do you have any thoughts on how to solve it? Thanks, Kareen. The first approach I see is looking through the list of yogurt expiration dates and finding the K yogurts closest to expiring, and then have Lucy consume them by removing them from the list. Programmatically, I can do that by finding the smallest expiration date in the list and remove it from the list a total of K times. To move to the next day, I just need to subtract one from the expiration date of all remaining yogurts. Then I'll continue this process until I run out of yogurts or all the remaining yogurts are expired. If you're familiar with big O notation, you might realize that's an O of n squared approach. That's a good start, but it's too slow for the larger test case. As I look at the problem more, I think I could improve the efficiency of the approach by first sorting the yogurts by days until they expire. That way, I can start at the beginning of the list of yogurts and walk through it one time, consuming along the way. I'm most comfortable with Python, so that's the language I'm going to use. I'm going to make a helper class with a few methods to help me simulate consuming yogurt. Notice that I make use of Python's sorted method, as well as list comprehensions. Feel free to use whatever constructs you can in the language you choose. Oh no, I'm seeing a runtime error when I try to submit my code. If I head over to the FAQ, I can see what that means. Ah, there's the issue. I forgot to use the self keyword in my consume method. Fixed. Shoot, now I've got a wrong answer. Mm. Ah, there it is. I forgot to reset my consumed today variable to zero. And submitted. To view your score for the round, check back on the dashboard. Don't worry if you click out of the problem. All of your work will be saved. A score for a round consists of a point total and penalty time. As soon as you get the correct answer for a test set, you get those points. The number of points a test set is worth is always shown on the scoreboard directly below the problem title on the dashboard. If you have the same number of points as someone else, Kickstart will use the penalty time as the tiebreaker. Your penalty time is the number of minutes from the start of the round until your last correct submission, plus a few extra minutes added for each incorrect attempt. Take a look at the rules and FAQ for exactly how the scoring works. In short, it's most important that you focus on getting as many points as possible but if you can do it quickly and without mistakes, that's even better. For the most part, Kickstart problems focus on algorithms and data structures. In the problem yogurt, I noticed that I could use sorting to improve my algorithm. Understanding and being able to use common algorithms such as graph traversals, dynamic programming, binary search, as well as data structures like stacks, queues, and binary trees will help you succeed in a Kickstart or other competitive programming contest. This code should be efficient enough to run through both test sets, but we want to show you an optimization that is even faster. Kareem, take it away. Thanks, Marin. In the previous example, we went forward in time and ate yogurts that were expiring the soonest. 
Is there a different way we could visualize the problem? Since daily capacity k is greater than or equal to 1, we have yogurt for at most n days. Let's think about what yogurts we could eat on the nth day. That would be yogurts that would expire at n or more days. So we can replace any a of i that is greater than n with n. Remember, we can always eat yogurt any time before it expires. Then, on the n minus 1th day, we can eat any excess from day n as well as yogurts that expire on day n minus 1. This way, we can work backwards, moving any excess yogurts until day 1, where the remainder must be discarded. In Java, you should always name your class Solution, with a main method that reads from standard in using the scanner as shown here. For each test case, we read in n and k. Then we read in the expiration dates, AFI, for all cups and bucket the yogurts by their expiration dates. We start from the nth day, eat up to k yogurts, and move the rest to the previous day. We make one forward pass through the data to bucket the yogurts, and one reverse pass to count the consumption. Be sure to hit the Submit Attempt button. And that is how you would solve yogurt in a kickstart round in linear time. After you solve what you can and the round ends, head to the dashboard to view the results. You can check out the round overview by the toggle here, and also learn about how to solve each problem by viewing the problem analyses posted after every round. You can view your rank on the scoreboard. Curious how your friend solved the problem? You can also see other contestants' code from completed rounds by clicking on their nickname in the scoreboard to see all their in-contest attempts. Remember, practice makes progress. We recommend taking a look at past Kickstart rounds on the archive page and trying your hand at some of the problems in practice mode in a three-hour window mirroring what an official round will be like. So that is the Kickstart platform. If it feels like a lot of information, don't worry about remembering everything. Review the detailed FAQ page. Also check out our YouTube playlist. Both have a ton of information on how to prepare for an upcoming round. We also encourage you to join our Facebook group to connect with the community, ask questions, and get helpful tips from fellow coders. Hope to see you in our next online round. Our schedule page can be found on our website and here. And remember to keep practicing. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you learned a thing or two, and this video will kickstart your competitive programming journey.